All right, everyone. Um, in the interest of, of keeping things on track and being respectful of everybody's time, um, I'd like to uh, see if we can't uh, get uh, this uh, edition of the TDD Steering Committee uh, quarterly update uh, uh, started today. Um, let me uh, let me start just by uh, doing a, a quick roll call and uh, making sure that uh, we have a quorum for the uh, for any votes we may take. Um, we start off with our chairman, Mr. Harris. Are you here? Present. All right. Um, Mr. Poland from Hammond. I am here. All right. Ms. Gritters from East Chicago. All right. Uh, Mr. Kingdon, Ogden Dunes. Mr. Barry from Porter. Present and accounted for. All righty. Mr. Cherry, Portage. And from Michigan City, uh, Mayor. Present. All right. Uh, I, know, um, I know Tim had emailed me and said he could not be uh, with us today. So uh, uh, moving on from South Bend. Uh, from Valparaiso, uh, Ms. Schrader. I'm here. Awesome. Uh, Mr. Jefferson from Dyer. Mr. I don't Gardner from Munster. Present. And I believe I saw Mr. Benson from Beverly Shores. Yep, you did. All right. And uh, Miss Watkins also did email me and said she couldn't uh, make it here today. That does give us uh, a quorum of seven members. So we can uh, move on and I will turn things over to our chairman, Chris Harris, if you'd like to uh, call a, uh, a vote on uh, for a vote in a second on the uh, minutes from uh, the last meeting. All right, no, thank you. I'm gonna make a motion to approve our minutes from our uh, May 15th, 2024 Transit Development District meeting. Seconded. Jeff Benson, if you couldn't tell. Yep. All right, Benson second. Uh, we'll have a roll call for approval. Sure. All right. Mr. Barry. Aye. Mr. Benson. Aye. Mayor Angie. Aye. Mr. Harris. Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Gardner. Yes. Ms. Schrader? Yes. Mr. Poland? Yes. All right. It is unanimous. Motion passes. Excellent. Awesome. Um, right. With so, your permission, uh, Mr. Chairman, I can move on to the rail project update. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, the RDA update on the rail projects. Please proceed, uh, sure. Mr. Wallman. No problem. All right. Uh, I, I, Things are uh, things continue to move along. First up here on the Westlake corridor, um, we're now at uh, ninety four percent completion as far as the design is concerned. They're still working on a few things, uh, train signals, operating systems. There's one major bridge uh, still in progress. Uh, a lot of this is similar to last the last update. Um, the current construction is focused on bridges, station areas, retaining walls, track work, and catenary. And uh, the construction overall is seventy seven percent complete. Um, we're still on track uh, for a uh, for hitting the revenue service date in May of next year. Um, at least that's what they tell us. So, um, if there are any questions, be happy to take them. All right. And then, of course, uh, double track. Uh, as we know, revenue service began in May. On that, um, Nick Deed is still uh, working out the kinks. In their in their new schedule, and I believe they have an updated schedule coming out next week uh, to to deal with some of the delays they've been experiencing, as well as to uh, to avoid some of the construction work that Metro is doing in Chicago at Millennium Station to increase uh, the South Shore's uh, access there. So uh, look for that coming out next week. But uh, overall, there are a few uh, punch list items that they have to to uh, to finish up. But the uh, the project is substantially complete. Um, overall construction is technically 95% complete. The 5% that isn't complete is related to the um, parking garage in Michigan City. And that should be uh, it's scheduled to be completed in February of next year. 
So that's where we stand with double track. Any questions? Oh. All right, that re completes my report Excellent on news. our uh, real update. Awesome. Thank you, David. I believe Aaron will be uh, taking this next slide. Uh, transit developed. Great. Awesome. All right. Thanks. Let's see uh, that to you, Aaron. Thanks, Chris. Uh, just a quick update on TDD boundaries. Um, I think as all of you are aware, we're continuing to work with communities that do not have TDD boundaries in place. Um, so we've been collaborating closely with Valpo. Uh, we do have some draft information we've um, worked with them on and are working through some um, TIF TDD interaction questions. Um, and we are on their timeline. So uh, just working to be helpful uh, and keep uh, that moving along. Uh, Beverly Shores and Pines, uh, both town officials uh, gave the go-ahead um, to drop a TDD. So we are working with those communities and we have a follow-up uh, meeting scheduled here in the near future. And then the last one we're working with is South Bend and uh, we're working closely with uh, the city, county, economic development and the airport authority. And we're in an information gathering phase. So that's the update on the TDDs. Thank you, Aaron. Let's see here. Any additional questions, comments from the committee? All right. Uh, so we'll move on to the Transit Development Program Guide. Um, David, are you are you giving the general overview? I think this is going program? to Mr. Sheldrake. Ah, got it. Sure. Sure, Chris. Um, Chris, thanks, and uh, and committee members. Uh, let me just go through this quickly, and then we can um, deal with questions. Um, there have been uh, lots of questions over the last couple of years, frankly, about uh, TDDs and what they're supposed to, how they're supposed to uh, perform, and uh, and to some extent, um, what happens when you have a TDD. Uh, overlaying a TIF district. So uh, I wanted to go through this uh, in terms of what the statute actually says, and then we will uh, talk about some of the more um, nitty gritty issues. Um, but uh, first of all, um, the way the law uh, has designed things, a TDD is very much like a TIF district. It collects incremental property taxes, um, the increment is defined in the same way as a, as a, in a TDD, uh, in a, as in a TIF district. Um, it's the amount, uh, above the base year and there's a base year defined. It's the year, uh, after the, or year in which the, uh, the state budget committee approves the boundary for the TDD and, um, that's the same concept uh, as a base year for a TIF. And then the increment will grow over time uh, as uh, new investment occurs and uh, the property tax assessed value grows. So um, uh, then the third bullet here, the increment, the incremental revenues can be used in the same way um, that are from a, TIF, a TD did district as for a TIF district. So uh, same concepts of, uh, of project expenditures, uh, all of the things that you can use, um, incremental revenues uh, that arise from a TIF district, you can uh, utilize uh, those for, for TDDs. Uh, let's go to the next slide. Here are the ways, here's the way that a TDD is different from a TIF district. Um, the increment that it collects is distributed by the county auditor to the Northwest Indiana RDA for deposit into an account solely for the use of that municipality within that TDD. So the RDA is uh, enjoined by the statute to maintain separate account, uh, dedicated accounts, for the TDD incremental revenues. 
And um, these would be both the incremental revenues that uh, come from property tax increment as well as income tax increment. And um, we can talk about the income tax um, increment uh, in a bit, but um, uh, the main thing to understand is that um, the RDA's um, uh, constraints are that it, it can only use uh, those incremental revenues uh, from uh, the TDD within that same TDD. The difference here, there's a slight um, wiggle room in that if there is a community that has two TDDs, then um, the community is, uh, is enabled by the statute or allowed by the statute to move increment revenues uh, from one uh, TDD uh, boundary to another uh, if, uh, if the community approves of that uh, shift of, of revenues and the use of revenues. Um, the, um, the second bullet here um, it gets a little bit into esoteric territory, but for those of you who spend a lot of time uh, with TIFs, you will know that the law allows uh, a municipality or redevelopment commission to um, utilize increment not only within the TIF district boundaries, but in areas that are judged to be serving that TIF. And uh, that is not the case in a TDD. That language that um, allows that those dollars to be used outside for an area that's judged to be serving uh, the development uh, is not there for a TDD. So um, the increment revenues for, from a TDD may only be used within the boundaries uh, of that TDD. So let's go to the next slide. So this is where things get a little more interesting. Um, uh, there are opportunities uh, for a TDD to overlap a TIF district. And the law makes a distinction between a TIF district that was established prior to the TDD law being passed, so prior to January 1, 2017, and, um, and, and then uh, a TIF created after the TDD law was established. Um, so um, because there is a, uh, a presumption in the law that uh, a, if a TDD overlaps a TIF that was created earlier than the TDD language was passed, the municipality may have bonds outstanding or other co uh, commitments for those revenues in, from the TIF district that are outstanding. And there is a um, requirement in the statute that the RDA would negotiate with the local community, the local redevelopment commission, to ensure that there is not a um, uh, some impairment of the that service on the bonds or impairment of an agreement that the community has made with regard to the TIF revenues, TIF increment revenues, and so. Um, in that case, um, the RDA and the uh, municipality or redevelopment commission, redevelopment commission are um, instructed to negotiate how they want to split up those revenues. And we'll talk a little bit in the next couple of slides about why there m might be a reason for a TDD to overlap a TIF. The second bullet here, the RDA is still allowed to re receive the increment in this case. It's subject to the negotiation. So it may be that the community says to the RDA, look, we think that we need all of these TIF increment revenues and we don't have a project that the RDA is need. We need the RDA's help on right now, but we may in the, in, in the future. And uh, so we're willing for you if you, if, we would like for you to overlap the TIF district, but uh, we want all of the revenues to come to the Redevelopment Commission 
um, in, at least in the near term. So that's the um, situation there. And the RDA is, um, uh, is, uh, is enjoined to negotiate with the local community to make sure that those obligations are uh, being met. So let's go to the next slide. So this is a case where a TDD uh, overlaps a TIF created after January 1, 2017. Um, and um, in this case, um, the statute presumes that the Redevelopment Commission, the municipality, uh, if they create a TIF district that overlaps a TDD um, uh, or allows a TDD to overlap a TIF district that was created after January 1, 2017, that the local municipality does so with the understanding that the incremental revenues derived from that overlap district would normally be distributed to the RDA. Um, now, that certainly the negotiations can still take place and the community can still say, we, we think we need those revenues to come to the Redevelopment Commission rather than the RDA. Um, that uh, negotiation would be, uh, would be undertaken when the um, RDA is working with the community to establish the boundaries for the TDD in the first place. So uh, remembering, we'll get to this in a minute, but remembering that the RDA doesn't do, hasn't created and won't create a TDD wherever inside a municipality, whether it overlaps a TIF district or whether or not, uh, unless the municipality is in support of that TDD boundary. Um, those discussions have taken place with the communities that have TDDs established. Those discussions are lengthy. Um, those discussions are capped by, at the end, by two public hearings of, with the RDA board in which the um, RDA board requires the community to make a statement that um, they, the community is in, in approval of the, uh, uh, of the TDD boundary. So um, the RDA is not in the, in the position uh, of creating TDD boundaries that a local community is not in support of. And frankly, the Indiana General Assembly, the State Budget Committee that must approve these finally after the RDA board uh, is not um, interested in a TDD boundary that the local community is not as supportive of. So um, that that is uh, th that situation as well. So um, let's uh, let's go to the next slide, please. This slide simply uh, attempts to do graphically uh, what we've talked about uh, in the statute in the last few slides. Um, I'm not sure that it uh, isn't doesn't overcomplicate the situation, so uh, you'll you'll forgive whoever the graphic graphic designer was who who developed this. Um, and uh, so the. Um, the, the situation is uh, in blue, there's a TIF increment that is uh, on top of the base um, uh, base revenues. Um, there is a, a TDD um, that um, provides uh, increment, it also collects increment. Uh, in this case, uh, this, <clears throat> excuse me, this is one possibility where a community may want the RDA to overlap a TIF district because they would like the TIF district, if the TIF district is sunsetted or stops, fires, the RDA can continue to collect the increment after that period of time and based on negotiations with the community, put those incremental revenues to whatever purpose the community wants uh, wants uh, those revenues to be expended. So, um, and then in this case, the PDD income tax, uh, which is again, uh, an incremental income tax, local income tax is shown on top of that. So let's go to the next slide, please. 
So let me let me just to be really, really clear about this. The RDA's purpose in creating TDDs is to enable a municipality to achieve its own development objectives. The RDA is not creating TD ba- TDD boundaries without the full consent of the municipality and and its redevelopment commission. The statute clearly maintains the municipality's authority for zoning and land use, whether inside or outside of TDD. So the RDA has no uh, pro- uh, project-specific development authority. Um, that's not the RDA's job. The RDA is looking to be a consensus facilitator of the redevelopment that a community is uh, is purposing to accomplish. Um, again, as I said this before, in order for a TDD boundary to be approved by the RDA board and by the state budget committee, there's been a requirement for meetings with public hearings and then uh, some statement of approval by the local municipality of where the boundary of the TDD is actually being placed. The boundaries of the TDD are um, important. Uh, This is not a a trivial process because the state will be collecting um, uh, local income tax, uh, incremental income tax within that boundary. So it is a boundary that exists for tax purposes. Um, And then the final bullet here, in each case uh, where there's a TDD, the RDA will um, negotiate with and engage in a memorandum of under- agreement that will be signed between the RDA and the local government to provide the documentation on how the revenues will be shared and distributed, the incremental revenues. And there are some other administrative matters that will be dealt with, like a re- how reporting will be handled and things like that. But the RDA It will be very clear and it's anticipated that if there's a TDD and there's more than one project that comes along, which we all certainly hope is the case, then uh, there will be an addenda to the MOA that will deal with how the revenues can be shared or will be shared on each project because the requirements might uh, be substantially different uh, in each case. So those those are the that's the run through here on uh, TDDs, uh, and I'm happy to answer uh, questions if there are questions from the uh, committee members. Uh, happy to um, engage with those. Uh, and here, you know, I, I have a, a just a general uh, question, um, just mean that for uh, the city of Gary's transit development district, uh, specifically uh, Gary Metro TDD, um, a good portion of the transit development district does overlay with the uh, consolidated TIF within the city of Gary. Um, and I just want to make sure I'm clear that if other communities are, uh, you know, having uh experiencing the same uh, situation as us. Do we formally have to have that MOA established for that increment to be uh, activated into the TDD? Um, uh, yeah, um, so let me, can I try to restate your question and make sure I understand what you're asking, Chris, sure. please? Sure. Um, yeah. So you're, you're asking if um, the city of Gary wants the TDD to be established, first of all, that overlaps a pre-existing TIF, your consolidated TIF. And then secondly, yeah. if you want, if you, the city of Gary, want the incremental revenues uh, that would be um, generated inside that overlapped area. And just to be clear, the way that the county auditors will deal with these overlapped areas. So the TDD, in I would say, essentially in every case, the TDD will not overlap all of the TIF district. It'll probably overlap some of the TIF district, maybe smaller, maybe larger. 
in the area where there is an overlapped uh, area, that is will essentially be treated, you might say, as almost as a separate taxing district. And that county auditor will have to track the increment in that overlapped area separately. Uh, and the RDA will help with that. But um, if your question is, in that overlapped area, it, the city of Gary, if the city of Gary wants the RDA to receive the increment from that overlapped area, presumably to be used for um, the RDA issuing debt or doing other things that the city wants the RDA to do with those revenues, Will a memorandum of agreement need to be signed? And the answer is yes. Got it. And and the Got reason it. and the reason is and the reason is Chris. For instance, let's just use the case that um, the city of Gary says to the RDA, "We want you to collect this increment inside this overlapped area, and we want you to use it um, to issue bonds." Well, there is absolutely no way that the RDA will be able to get a clean bond opinion on the issuance of debt for, based on those revenues without an, an, an MOA that clearly states the allocation of those revenues to the RDA. Does that make sense? Yep, it does. You answer my question 100%. So thank you. I, and I, I guess I do want to uh, make a, just a comment in general. So you had the opportunity to um, have a discussion last week about uh, the financial tools available um, and the parameters available of how um, the city could, you know, apply for funding um, on behalf of a project that's within the trans development district. And um, it, it was very exciting and refreshing to see that, you know, I was concerned uh, in general and more so our constituency was concerned about, you know, if you needed to be a big developer or a big player uh, in an effort to uh, have access to the low interest bonds that are available in this opportunity, as well as um, even grant support, gap funding support for projects. Um, and uh, you know, what I've learned is that uh, this can also help uh, incremental developers, uh, those entrepreneurs, um, stakeholders in the community that uh, are established, that want to grow, or uh, are looking to be a part of um, our transit development district's growth, um, that there's no um, there's no limit when it comes to how small the development uh, support could be. Uh, and I think that's uh, tremendous, at least for us uh, in the city of Gary. So very excited for it. Uh, Bill, I got a quick question. We we talked the other day, and I appreciate your input. Uh, when should we start working on the memorandum of agreement? Should we do that right away, or in in um, for the overlap? I, and then I also, think... has, has anyone written one yet that we could use as an example? Yeah. So we have a draft of the MOA. Okay. We are doing, <clears throat> pardon me, we are doing some uh, final cleanup of that with our attorneys, which is the way we have, which is the reason why we haven't <clears throat> sent one out to uh, everybody and their brother. But um, uh, so, uh, yes, I would say in the next few weeks, um, we would expect uh, the RDA to, uh, we should expect the RDA to send out uh, what we would call a draft MOA, and um, and then we would expect to have a discussion with you, your bond council, with um, whomever in your group, um, redevelopment commission, um, you want to um, uh, to be involved in 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 this kind of more technical, deeper dive. Discussion. That doesn't mean that the people on this call shouldn't be involved. It just simply means you may want to bring others. When we do that, you may want to bring others into the conversation. That's all. 
Super. Thank you. Chris, I'm I'm fine. I'm uh, that's my final comment, unless there are other questions. Sure. Yeah. Are there any other questions from the committee? No question. Awesome. Just a comment. This oh, go ahead. Valpo. Sure. I, um, I want to thank uh, the RDA team because we've had a lot of uh, probably exhausting questions, and you've been uh, so very generous with your time and getting us answers on all of our questions on this issue specifically. So thanks. Awesome. Thank you, Beth. Any other questions or comments? Awesome. Okay. All right. Thank you, Bill. You're welcome. Awesome. So uh, wrapping up the, the end of our uh, transit development uh, district uh, committee meeting, are there any general updates from the committee, comments, questions, uh, general updates in your community? Anyone would like to share? Sure, Chris, this is Jeff Benson from Beverly Shores, and we have a we have our meeting with the RDA set for next Monday to see the the draft boundaries. And so we're excited to see what that looks like and start that process, us in the town of Pine. So exciting. That's all. Awesome. Awesome. Congratulations. It is very exciting. Uh, any other questions or comments? Um, I'll add something. Um, so Friday, I'll be doing a walkthrough of our parking garage. So if anybody's been to Michigan City, uh, you'll see uh, two huge cranes uh, moving along. Our elevator shafts and our mixed-use development um, has gone up as well. So it's super exciting to see. And it's um, almost unbelievable that it's in Michigan City. So um, uh, we're excited. So I'll be doing that on this Friday. Excellent. Nice. Congratulations, Mayor. It's a lot of momentum, a lot of momentum up there. Uh, South Coast Transit Center will be open by the time uh, this committee meets again. I don't have the date for a, uh, a ribbon cutting, but uh, we're moved into our transit office uh, in our TOD. And uh, today are finishing some of the last punch list items. So we'll be ready to uh, move our service back down to that location for the, the Chicago Dash. And so we're looking forward to that. We'll make sure that you guys uh, get get invites. Great. Good Smart. night, Ben. Yes. Congratulations, Beth. Awesome. Anyone else? This is great, great news. So <laughs> any, any, any other comments, updates? Uh, the only other thing, Chris, I'll add is just a thank you for those who's who have participated in stakeholder meetings as part of the RDA's uh, strategic plan update. Really appreciate all of your time. Thank you. Um, thank you, Aaron. Um, and then also, you know, I'll, I'll give an update for the, the city of Gary. Um, so we're actively working with the Notre Dame School of Architecture um, and developing both the design standard for our downtown, um, as well as uh, templates for small incremental developers for both housing, um, workforce housing in a traditional lens of um, retail to ground level um, uh, living space up top, um, as well as commercial templates that are platted on, uh, that, that fit on originally platted uh, lots uh, originally developed here in the city of Gary um to help support incremental development within our transit development district um this effort is going to go on through friday the notre dame team is here in my office <laughs> now you can't see them but um they they have about a, a task force of about 25 individuals 
um, students and uh, consultants uh, from across the nation. Um, but you know, we're very excited to have them here um, and have this uh, plan uh, procured so that we could uh, move development in the right direction for the city. So we're very excited. Um, and the mayor has been very uh, passionate about um, how we uh, grow uh, in the right way that respects our city's identity, um, along with helping our entrepreneurs locally grow along the process. Uh, and in general, I also, uh, I was on the website, on our RDA website, and I recognized a really cool tool I didn't see before where it shows, uh, uh, Aaron, you probably had a hand in this, in creating a map that shows all of our transit development districts across the region. You can kind of see those shapes, and I think it's very insightful to see um, other communities all in one map and kind of toggling back and forth and allowing developers to be able to understand what opportunities exist between all of our communities. Um, so I, re I really thought that was an excellent tool. So thank you. So far. Nice. Good job. All right. So that rounds out uh, the yeah. questions, comments, and updates. I, 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 this is I Chuck think, uh, with the Tom Munster. Can I make one comment also, please? Absolutely, Chuck. Yes. Um, you mentioned inter incremental development, and, and the town of Munster, quite frankly, has struggled with uh, what TDD, what this type of transit development might be. Um, and, and one of the things that just, you know, kind of piqued my interest was, you know, smaller incremental type of development. And, you know, we see the large projects that are happening in Michigan City and, and Hammond, which are, are fantastic. Um, but at the same time, you know, Munster doesn't really have those large spaces to redevelop. Um, I'm wondering uh, if there can be some more examples of, of potential other areas of this smaller incremental type of development um, that we can maybe educate some of the, the folks in Munster or just kind of put together some uh, educational slash informational type um, development options or opportunities from a, a smaller smaller scale. And again, I know we, we've talked off and on with Aaron and things like that, but again, this is just something that might be of interest in the future and I'd be happy, I don't wanna take more of the meeting here about it, but it might be something more of the future that if, if uh, someone wants to reach out to me, maybe I can explain a little bit more what we're looking for or maybe what some of the potential options might be. Absolutely. No, thank you, Chuck, for, for that uh, question. Um, and I can just generally share with you, I think what, what's unique because, you know, our communities, they were all developed, you know, in different times. So for the city of Gary, our challenge has been that we've had in general in the core of our city, uh, especially with all, within the boundaries of our transit development district, uh, our parcels were platted uh, roughly 30 feet wide by 109 feet deep. So in the 1960s, we suburbanized our zoning code where you were you required to, you know, develop on multiple parcels for one single development, as opposed to what existed in the past, where you maybe maybe have had one commercial structure that was literally 30 feet wide and 100 feet deep that a small business was able to develop and occupy um, and pass on and have adaptive reuse over time. Um, and then when we demolished those structures, you know, over uh, decades of, of blight and decline, now we're trying to figure out, well, how do we rebuild our city in a way that it's accessible to those um, entrepreneurs that are in a community that may not, you know, be able to afford to occupy a brand new development, new construction, uh, because the cost to lease that space is not attainable for them. How can we still allow them to find opportunities to develop on the parcels that we have and changing our zoning code to make uh, that kind of development more agreeable for those smaller scale entrepreneurs? Um, and I think that, you know, here, because we have swaths of vacant land you know, in downtown Gary that we have to work with. And I understand, you know, the condition of Munster, uh, you, you, you probably a little bit more challenged with figuring out, you know, what underutilized sites you have um, that maybe you could carve out for that. But I would love to, you know, talk with you, you know, offline about, you know, you know maybe if 
like a, a, a second eye, <laughs> you know, to take a look at your community, or you can take a look at what we're doing here. I know that when we're complete with our uh, uh, exercise with Notre Dame School of Architecture, we're going to be able to have templates for uh, small scale developers that fit the character of our built identity here in the city of Gary. And uh, we can show and uh, share with the whole team here, you know, what we're doing to make downtown accessible for home builders and for uh, entrepreneurs on the parcels that we have platted here in the city of Gary. And if there are other opportunities across our districts um, that could help support small businesses across your communities, we'd love to share that. So. Chris, what is the thank timeline you, thank for? Thank you very much. Uh, Chris, what's the timeline for um, the Notre Dame group um, wrapping up their findings? I know they're only going to be in town this week, but do they have a, a timeline for wrapping up a presentation? Uh, they do. They do. So uh, their timeline is uh, completing this report and effort by the end of this month. So uh, a lot of the a lot of the work happens this week. <laughs> Here, here in the field and uh, communicating with stakeholders. And then after they've compiled all of that information, we have, we've had five public meetings <laughs> um, throughout this process with public engagement as we tweak and refine what this looks like. Um, then they're gonna have a week to be able to refine and polish this, this plan. And uh, by the end of the month, we should have a plan procured. Uh, they've done this for other communities within a hundred mile radius. Uh, of Notre Dame. Notre Dame has uh, switched uh, over to more of a uh, research-based institution. Um, so they're more active uh, within a hundred mile radius of uh, their campus to support uh, local communities. So uh, this is something that they've done in Elkhart and Laporte um, and Kalamazoo, Michigan, um, as well as South Bend. Uh, and it's a, uh, also an opportunity that when it comes to grant funding federally, uh, Kalamazoo, they were able to take their plan that you know, was you know developed by the Notre Dame School of Architecture and apply for federal grant funding. And uh, pretty much, you know, half the battle when you're applying for grants is understanding the direction of where you want to go and what the exact issue is and what are projects that are going to be able to help uh, help you actualize the bigger picture of developing your downtown core. So when Kalamazoo was able to have that plan at hand, they were able to apply for grants and they were awarded about $98 million of federal funding because the, the plan was that clear that they were able to communicate what their needs were that uh, it helped uh, those who review those grants uh, at a federal level to understand the need and it put Kalamazoo up to the top of the line and to receive those funds. So the, the return on investment on on the opportunity uh, is is very high, um, and it's, it's definitely worth the effort when it comes to uh, such a renowned uh, institution as Notre Dame uh, to be able to be a part of this um, and, and raise visibility to community needs and, and help support whether it be affordable housing or uh, incremental development growth. Um, this is their expertise, so um, it's definitely worth the investment made. And I'd be happy to share more details um, with the group about that process, what that process looks like with engaging uh, with Notre Dame and also, um, you know, what the end product will be when we receive our report. Awesome. Okay. If there are no other comments or questions, uh, I make a motion to adjourn our meeting. Jeff Benson seconds. That's the second. Uh, roll call to adjourn. Sure, Mr. Berry? Aye. Mr. Benson? Aye. Mayor Angie? She, she had to leave. You may have dropped out on us. Uh, Mr. Harris? Aye. Okay. Mr. Gardner? Aye. Mr. Schrader? Aye. Mr. Poland? Aye. And I believe I saw Mr. Kingan pop in. I did too. Uh, aye. Yes. Yeah. Aye. I had to get right. into the attendees. Excellent. All right. Great. So we Thank are adjourned. You. Thank you.
Thank you.